All right, welcome back to Taco Bola Gaming. My name is Taco Bola. We're going to continue our tutorial playthrough for Europa Universalis 4. And of course, the playthrough is happening with Castile. Um, we have just pieced out Morocco, and I'm not sure that I did a good enough job explaining what I was doing there. We're going to try and explain how peace deals work a little bit better over here with Tunis. Um, and maybe some of my thinking why I wanted Morocco out and what I was doing. Um, so if you look here at this screen, which you can left click on this icon, this icon means you're at war and the flag is the main, main country you're at war with. We have Tunis, who has a high war exhaustion or enthusiasm, so they're rip roar and they're ready to continue the fight. And then Granada, who has a very low uh, war enthusiasm. What low means is that even if I didn't occupy any of their lands whatsoever, I could probably um, I could piece them out for white peace right now. I am going to take this uh, spy network that I was building up for siege ability um, for a faster siege with Morocco. I now have uh, peace with them, so I don't need that anymore, and I'm going to go ahead and lay claim to something that they own. I'm just going to lay claim to that. And I'm going to right click on uh, that diplomat to bring them home. I can call Aragon into this war. I don't think I need to. Um, so that is there. Now, one thing before I. Uh, well, I guess I've got to wait five days. I'm going to keep the Tunis spy network going. And that is because. Um, I don't think if I, I don't know if I explained this or not, but the Tunis spy network. When you have a spy network, it increases your siege ability against that country, so I can siege their forts faster than they can siege mine, which is very very important to um, to do. I have a four siege general. It's been a a hot minute since I played. Uh, oh, it's a it's a uh, mercenary. So the next thing I want to talk about is black flagged or exiled armies, uh, which is this army here. Uh, I was sieging down this fort, and um, I don't actually have a right to be here. The only reason I could be here is because I had declared war on them, and they don't have a right to stop me. Uh, but now that we're at peace, I don't have a right to be here. So this army is considered exiled. It has a little black flag uh, by it. We also can see I have exiled armies in the province of Tangiers. What that means for me, is that this army cannot fight. I have to bring it quote-unquote home before it can fight. Home means either a province that I own, such as Sevilla, any of these that are yellow, or a province that I occupy, which is these four right now in Granada. If I stepped foot in any of those provinces, I would... Uh, lose the exile status, I would have returned home and then I can uh, bring them back into the fight. Or, if I had a vassal, I have Navarra. If I stepped in land that my vassal owns and occupies, um, then I would also be able to, like if I could just transport them right to Navarra, they would also be unexiled uh, by doing that. Or if I put them on ships, if I put them on transports, those 10 would be unexiled and then uh, we could move on. However, moving them into my ally in the war, I don't think unexiles them. They have to go to land that is actually mine. So I could bring them up here. They can go anywhere they want, by the way. Also, the Black Flag Army can go literally anywhere that they want. Um, and they cannot fight. I don't even think they can fight rebels, but they definitely can't fight the enemy. They are basically off the map until I can get them home, and then they we can move back with the pr appropriate and correct uh, methodologies. Now, the two ways that I can get them unexiled right now would be to move them back home, uh, to go here to Jabal Tariq, which is an occupied territory across the strait, and they would be done. However... This little fleet is coming in here, and uh, that is um, 
not something that necessarily I want to tangle with because I haven't been doing that good, if I recall, um, in Navy fights. I probably could win now that Morocco's Navy is out of the scene, um, but I don't want to take that risk, and I don't think I need to. Right before I pieced out, I got these two armies, or these three armies, I guess, into my ally into Lumpkin. Now, because they are my ally, I have a right to be here. Uh, so these armies were not exiled when um, when I started that. So I'm going to take this army here, and I'm just going to move them here, and it's already set up. I'm going to try and occupy this. And then I'm going to move this army here as well, and they'll walk on over, and as soon as they step foot in here, when I have it occupied, then they'll be unexiled, and they'll be ready to go, and I don't have to even worry about crossing the strait or not. I think I am going to take this fight, though. <laughs> when they uh, come, they're already locked in. I'm going to pull on out, and I'm going to take that fight. Oh, no, they're going over here. They're going to the Barbary Coast. Um, I don't think I'm going to get there in time, so we'll just stay and heal those last few ships. Um, so the next thing I want to talk about is what am I trying to do with Tunis? Now, there's a couple of things that I could do. I'm at 404 diplomatic relations, but Tlemkin probably is not a long-term ally. Um, so I could, like, turn on them if I wanted to. And uh, one thing you can do is you can release vassals. So any nation, you click on any province, and they'll have flags. These are the nations that consider it a core and have a claim. So this particular province, Tunis considers it a core. No one else considers it a core. Um, here, though, this province here in Queda, Morocco considers it to be a core, Granada considers it to be a core, and Portugal considers it to be a core. Um, so all three of them have a kind of permanent, well not quite permanent, but a very, very long amount of time that they can um, consider that to be their land. It expires after 50 years of having a not uh, not owned it. Um, so Morocco, because it's actually Moroccan culture, this will never expire. Morocco will always consider that to be their land. So um, you look at here, Telemkin has a claim on this province. So um, I hope they won't actually get there and. Um, occupy it first. But they have a claim on that province. Tunis, of course, owns it, so they have a core on that province. And then there's this one. It's grayed out. It's hard to see on this particular one. Let's go up here. It's still hard to see because it's Aragon. Um, Corsica. That's grayed out. But it's really hard to see. Here we go. That was that was one we can see. You can see how it's kind of grayed out. Um, that means that the nation does not actually exist currently in this particular game. But I could release it. It's one of the things that you can do from the diplomatic tab. Um, here, when I'm not at war, I could release nations. So right now I could release like Asturias here. I own it. It's a core for me. But I could release Leon out of it. And I could release Asturias out of it. And when you release a vassal, um, you uh, release them with every bit of land that you own um, that they also consider a core. So for Algiers, um, there's nothing else around here that they consider a core. Ooh, this is a new, new tag. It's only those two, though? Yeah, it's only those two. Um... But Algiers also has this one, that one, that one, and I think that's it. And they will have those cores when I release it, or if I were to release it, they would have those cores. Um, and a reconquest saying, this is my rightful land, it's one of my core provinces, and I'm going to take it back, is actually a lot less aggressive expansion. Other nations say, oh yeah, that makes sense. Um, and it's a lot less cost as well, so it's, it's one of the best ways to expand. 
is to take one province uh, of a tag that has additional cores and then feed them those cores and then integrate later. So that's something we could do is we could take this one province, release Algiers, and then turn on Telemkin and feed them those provinces there. Something we could do. I don't think it's what I'm going to do, but it's something that I could do. Uh, the other thing that we could do is we could, you know, just eat a couple of provinces of our own and then try and get down here um, to try and attack a Togert, a Mazab. That's, you know, something there. You also, with all of those provinces, I could just have them release Algiers uh, in a peace deal. I assume that's not a DLC thing. But either way, their war enthusiasm, like I said, was 51. I probably don't have any war score against them at all. Yeah, it's a zero. So right now they won't do anything. So I have to go and occupy them. How do I get war score? You get a little bit of war score for just occupying any province. And particularly you get uh, some reasons, what they say, for peace. But the main ones you want to, to occupy are the ones with the fort symbols. Uh, particularly the capital fort, which right now is here. Now for me, I have a capital in, I have a regular fort in my capital, so I don't actually have the star, uh, the little crown on the fort. You just have to kind of know <laughs> where the capital is. Um, there's a way to, to see that, but I need a diplomat to show you um, if you don't have that. But for here, so I'm looking. I'm I'm wanting to get this province under my occupation, and that province under my occupation. And if that happens, they're going to be very very eager to get me out of their territory. The other thing to note is that we are still low on prestige, so we could uh, quote unquote farm prestige from Tunis. I don't believe I made them a co-belligerent. Um, I think I talked about that when I declared the war, but if they were a co belligerent in fact, I know I didn't because they have a nice red flag here that says not a co belligerent in the war. What that means is that taking provinces will cost them twice as much, but they could not call in their allies uh, in this war. Whereas um, if they had been a co belligerent, I could take provinces from them as if I had declared war directly on them, but they could also call in their allies, which would not be fun. So I think that's the plan, and we're going to go ahead and unpause. And we have a lot of people going directly for the fort, and that's why I wanted to get the fort, is because this is something that uh, will give me a lot of war score. So if we go here, sue for peace, um, you can look over here and see reasons for uh, them not wanting to peace out. One of those reasons there, minus five, Tunis holds Tunis. Okay, that means that that's their capital. So you can click the F key on your keyboard and just type in Tunis, and that's the country. That'll show you where the tag is, but here is the province, and it'll be outlined in purple, and there's the capital. It's a trick. Uh, if you ever don't know where the capital is, that's how to do it. And to get rid of the purple line, you just click on any other province, or I assume anything at all. So we are going to take this fight. Um, I assume that we're going to be okay. We have 16k. They have 9. And we are no longer building. We are ready to go there. So we're going to go ahead and head out. I am also going to build some ships. Um, because I have money. I have 143 ducats and nothing to spend it on. And so I think I'm going to build light ships. And I'm going to go one over the force limit. Going over force limit in Navy is not that big of a deal. I mean, you don't want to completely overdo it, but it's not a huge deal. Oh, this fight's only going to be one. Nice. And they did not stop here, so this will go under my occupation, which means we will unblack flag is exactly what I want. And I'm going to come take this fight. Um, I think that I'm going to beat anything they can throw at me 
if nothing else, I will be able to damage those four ships very, very fast. Okay, so, yeah, they're going to the Gulf of Gabes. Their big fleet, the four, one, four light ships, one galley, and 11 transports, it's going uh, this way. They won't be back in time. Uh, we have the six galleys, uh, the first fleet. That's going the, to the Tyranian Sea. That's going up over here. And they will arrive on the 17th, so they also are locked in. Uh, so it is only this one that's going to wind up in the Barbary Coast, which is a, a you know, a heavy ship, but I think we're going to win that fight pretty easily because they're just they're moving elsewhere, right? They can't get back in time. If they do move in the direction to head back, um, they won't get there in time, and when they do arrive, I can just retreat. And uh, so you can see the end of the Navy battle. Uh, they lost one light ship. They lost three transports. We did not gain any of them. So, eh, wasn't the end of the world. And uh, now, this guy is going to uh, occupy here. This ship, Fortunus, is in port here. And they'll get a repair on the end of the month, including a repair of morale. But once I finish this siege, they can't sit in port anymore. They'll be kicked out and forced to take this fight, which will be a very bad fight for them. So I want you to take a look here. We're going to, if you click on here, you can hover over this pie. And you can see the, the end of the siege phase, which for anything that's not a fort is just one siege phase and you take it. So in one day, I'm going to occupy this. And then on September 12th, this army will be unblack flagged, and uh, we will be able to use them because this is occupied by me. And I'm going to go uh, free this and then just start occupying Tunis down. And you can see we already have... We don't have any war score. Really? Because they... Um, you can see Mejita's occupied is... 3.30, but their blockades offset that. Yeah, it is what it is. So the 12th of September, and we are no longer black flagged, just like that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, and I'm going to put them here. And I'm going to basically try and make sure that this 9 stack doesn't do anything too funny. While we finish carpet sieging them, and I'm going to split this army. I'm going to take this two stack down here. And once this is done, you can see that we forced this battle to happen. And that's not a battle they want. That's one, granted, combat ship, but one heavy ship against 21 of my ships. So that's going to be a quick, quick wipe, and that ship is destroyed. I did not lose any ships. I am now going to I have lost Tunis's other fleet. I'm a little scared of that, but I'm going to go ahead and try and head over here and relieve the siege of, or the, the blockade of Roma, because that was a lot of war score. Now, I want to make sure I say this. When I pieced out Morocco, the war was a lot more even. Morocco had most of the stuff that the enemy had in this war. Morocco itself had um, quite a large army of 21 potential force limit. And they also had Tafalit, Sus, and Marrakesh. So I wanted to get them out as quickly as I could. So I sat on their forts, which by the way, just simply sitting on a fort gives them reason to get out, even if you don't actually take it. And I occupied their capital. I, I did everything I could as quickly as I could to get Morocco out of the war. Because it was actually relatively even at that moment. Now with Morocco out of the war, and it's just Tunis and Granada, which is fully occupied and has no troops. They have 9,000 troops on the field. We have 60. 60 to, actually, I think 62. So now... This war is completely unbalanced in my favor. Now I want to push this war as far as I can push it. 
So I want to get as much as I can out of Tunis. So I'm going to not just white piece them as soon as I can like I did Morocco. I want to actually push for something uh, to grow myself, grow my ally, something uh, in that way. Um, let's go ahead and take a look. I know I'm going to want all of Granada. That is 55 aggressive expansion. But only 55 with Granada. The next nation down, I can't tell exactly what it'll be, but it would be a lot less. So maybe I have some room um, to take Tunis uh, out as well. So that we can go here. Now land will cost half as much, but or land will cost twice as much war score. But I could still take some land. I could still do something. Uh, the one thing to consider, though, is that this is all Muslim land. So I may not want that. But it may not hurt to have a Muslim vassal in this area that might be able to help me kind of get some strength. That's not a bad idea. Um, so again, we could release Algiers. We could take this and release Algiers. That would be 36 aggressive expansion on its own. We can talk about coalitions when we peace out Granada. Hmm. Might still be worth it. So I think I want to do that, and then I want to get money. So if you hover over this, you can see I can go up. Theoretically, I was supposed to be able to go up by one. But um, by one war score, and I am. I'm going up by one war score. It's worth 11 ducats, and you can have up to 25 war score in money or five loans. Um if you shift and left click it'll go as much as they're willing to accept at this moment which is already nothing so that's not there but if you shift and right click it'll go to the maximum amount you can do to take the 25. then you can transfer trade power i don't think that that's something i want to do here because i'm not actively using my trade power in the tunis trade node in their capital node so I don't think that's something that I wish to do. But war reparations means that they will be forced to give me 10% of their income for the next 10 years. And if you have called allies into a war, which we have, the money that you get, the pure gold that you get, is actually divided up amongst the allies based upon their war participation, which I'll talk about that in a moment. War reps will go only to you. So that is always something you want to take more than anything else. If we're farming prestige, ways we can farm prestige would be to end a rivalry um, or to end alliances. And I think it might be worth it to say I'm going to take one war score less, two war scores left? Yeah, two war scores less to get down to 70 and end a rivalry. Preferably with, say, with a nation I'm not about to attack, like Savoy. So we're going to push until we can get 100% war score because this war is in our favor and that's worth it doing it. That would get me 10 prestige and um, would get me a chance to grow down here. So that is what we want to do. In order to do that, we're likely going to have to take all of these forts, which means we're going to have to cross this strait and take this fort as well, which means we need naval superiority. So that's why I'm going to try and take this fight while these six galleys are separated from their friends. Hopefully that made sense. Now the one thing we have to worry about is rebels potentially cropping up in Granada. Uh, so we need to be thinking about that. Now, when we reclaim Andalusia and get these four provinces, we will get a permanent claim on all of Portugal. So this is something that I have been thinking about. I think I want to get my spy network going on Portugal now because i want to claim get rid of those purple lines political map i want to claim quita while it still only costs 
Excuse me. While it still only costs 20 Spy Network for me to claim it. Once I get permanent claims on all of Portugal, this is actually going to cost like 100 Spy Network. Like it's going to be impossible to get this extra claim. And I really want this province. So that is something I'm going to do. I'm going to try and build up this Spy Network and get that claim before I click the mission to be completed. And we have sunk all six of those galleys. Here's where the fleet is over here. Uh, and I think that I'm going to try and attack. You know, continue to press my advantage. Because now all of their galleys, their primary combat ships in this area of the world, are gone. And so I think that would be a very beneficial thing for me to just come on in here and try and fight. We have uh, the numerical advantage, and they have retreated. And uh, Tunis did not lose all their fleet. It's right here. And it is going into the Strait of Messina. I want to chase it. It's likely going to a port somewhere. Yep, they are fighting here. So we have four heavy ships, which are the best combat ship outside of... Um, the what they call Inland Seas, which is from here. I don't think this is an Inland Sea. Yeah. So from the Gulf of Amaria, all of this is Inland Seas. And then just the channel. So the channel here and the Straits of Dover. They were, at least. I don't know if that's still the case. Used to be quote, inland seas, end quote, and then from, I think, here? No, from here on in, in the Baltic area, are inland seas, and then also in Asia, but I don't think we're going to worry about that in this campaign. In the inland seas, galleys actually have as much combat ability as the heavy ships, and they cost way less. So that's something to uh, be thinking about there. Now, I've gotten reinforced... And we can quickly fight here, these two, and I think we actually destroyed those two. So again, we're just going to keep pressing our advantage against them here. And try and just defeat the Tunisian Navy so that we don't have to worry about it. And you can see that they're down to seven ships now, very demoralized, they're almost all transports. So that works out for us very, very well. And I am going to just leave the ships there. We're going to move our two stack here, the Renaissance. Uh, we did not get it. It spawns in Italy, and I will try and remember to cover institutions in a future video as that matters more then. Right now, don't worry about that particular institution. Not much you can do about it anyway. So, uh, I'm going to explain Zone of Control and why I'm sitting here uh, instead of moving over here uh, real quick, and then we'll probably end this video. Um, so this is a regular fort. It's not a level one capital only fort. It's a regular fort. And it exudes something called a zone of control, which I'm going to go to my fort level map. No, no, no. Fort level. Thank you. And so this area here is under Kef's zone of control. Just as this fort produces a zone of control around here. Um, once you enter into that zone of control, the only place you can go from there is into the fort. You can't go past the fort to get to Tunis, even though I want to. Now, I could get onto a transport in Cape Bon and then re-land somewhere else, like Tunis. These guys are going to land where I can't go. You see that red X says, land movement blocked by hostile fort. That would be Kef. I cannot go here no matter how much I want to. I can't go here no matter how much I want to. I can transport. But I want to keep these ships here, keeping these guys in check. Once I take this fort, 
which should happen relatively soon. Then, um, then I will be able to walk past it because now I will control that zone of control. Tunis would not be able to walk past it to get back over here. Uh, the only thing that I maybe could do was would be to get military access through Togert, which they would give me, and then I could wrap around and get here, but I would still be blocked because Kef does border uh, them. So this is in that zone of control right here. Um, so I still would not be able to do that. Although there is a little bit of a bug, I probably could, because this is in a different zone of control, probably could get to like Tatooine or something like that, um, is what it is. And by the way, Tatooine is not a Star Wars reference. Star Wars is referencing this province. That is the actual name, and it is it was filmed here. The actual set is here uh, in this general area of the Tunisian desert. Uh, so that's your... Uh, trivia for the <laughs> end of the video here is that this actually is uh, where the actual Tatooine this is where Star Wars was filmed uh, and they named it that I believe they named it that because they named it after where they filmed it so anyway I've been Taco Bowler Gaming and I will see you next time